الأسبوع and... Oh, and ladies and gentlemen you're listening to an extended Louis B. Free radio show Brain Food from the Heartland do I have to? Okay. The Louis B. Free radio show Brain Food from the Heartland is an adult oriented show intended for and only for a mature adult audience listener discretion is strongly advised you know the, I, have to, I have to tell you guys it's like who else is uh, and when they do the, I'm not doing the views the views and opinions I never understood that and I've been, I've tried to behave in my radio days that I spell with a Z, but the views and opinions expressed are the view of who else's would they be? Oh, sorry, guys. I, I got a little frustrated there. Ladies and gentlemen, you know, it, go ahead. It, it, it just surprises me how many, how many, not necessarily Zoom calls like this, but interviews where people are, I mean, they're, they're, they're all cussing like a sailor every other word and they, and, Nobody seems to mind about it, you know. Well, you know, it, we're, I did the disclaimer. The way I see it, once I do the disclaimer, the adult disclaimer, you're on your own. I don't understand. Turn it off. Don't listen. I, I, <laughs> I, I'm sorry to go on. I never understood that over the, the the years. Turn it off. Don't listen. So, okay, ladies and gentlemen, you've heard me playing from Texas Scratch. You know, I love this music, and now I love having Buddy Bington on and Jim are on from texas strat guys good morning oh there's the, oh wait i got to get a picture of that see that's that's terrible for listeners right oh what do you get a picture of louie i'm getting a picture of jim holding up texas scratch how cool okay so i would hold you up too if i had one <laughs> i had five of them and i've sent them out already ah uh, jim still has one so uh we let's start buddy tell us about yourself well, not much to tell, really. Oh, uh, excuse me, sir. There's lots to tell. Go ahead. You know, I, <laughs> I live in Hearst, Texas, kind of 15 minutes away from Dallas-Fort Worth Airport. Been here all my life. Uh, play locally. And I've played around the world with John Mayall. I was in there from uh, 1993, I believe, to uh, 2008. 15 years on the road with him and had a good time doing that. And I know Jim from Jim lives in Dallas, which is about 30 miles east of me. And we get together on gigs once in a while and see each other. And, and we've done a couple of Texas Scratch gigs. We haven't done any with Vince Converse yet because he has moved from Houston to, to Denver. Oh. And we're, we haven't hooked up with him yet. But we plan on doing that, hooking up with him and Jeff Simon, the drummer. Nathaniel Peterson, our bass player, sadly has passed away. And we're going to have to get oh. somebody else in. I'm sorry to hear that. Uh Oh, I, I've got you got better, lots of great stories uh, about uh, being on with John Mayall. My eyes have I'm a huge fan. And by the way, you said that he just tur he tur recently turned 90. Yes, on 90 years old on November the 29th. He's he's doing pretty good. <laughs> That's not, uh, I don't think he's getting out doing he's not touring anymore, but he said he wasn't averse to like going out locally in california and playing with some gigs with some people wow know. that that that's incredible jim good afternoon I wish you the best. i'm sorry <clears throat> you wish would you say i just wish you the best is all I said yeah, go ahead of course yeah jim honored to have you tell us about yourself um well i was born in dallas in 1960 i'm still living in this area i've been playing music professionally for over 40 years uh i've been playing with George Thorogood and the Destroyer since 1999. This is wow. my fifth year. And uh, I've always remained active outside of that with my own group, Monkey Beat, and, and some other projects I've had. Done some, some records with Alan Haynes and Mike Morgan, a couple of other Texas blues guitar players, and have uh, played on an album uh, with Elvin Bishop. Elvin played on one of my records. He's a He's a big hero to me and a dear friend. I I love Elvin. I I remember Elvin Bishop from I don't know how many decades ago. Um, well, yeah, five Bill, more. And five. he was in college in Chicago the year I was born. So I mean, he he's to call him a seasoned veteran would be an understatement. <laughs> but he he's a he's a I consider him a, a good friend, and he's you know he's. Just, you know, I love what he does. I love everything he is. And he's always been very kind to me. Um, so what else do I like? I like I, to I watch appreciate, I'm sorry. Forgive me for interrupting. I appreciate you sharing this about him being kind because we always, he, we hear 
So, you know, we don't know. You might hear on social media, whatever, about somebody. You don't know him. You don't know who posted whatever. I'm glad to hear from you who knows him well about his kindness because too often, and, I, and I've got to say in fairness, I can't imagine what it's like going again and again and again, stepping on stage. You know, people would boo me. But for people to scream and clap and, and yell for you and fans, you know, and uh, you know that I think that would be difficult to not let that get to you and to hear that he's kind. Um, oh yeah, thank, and you it, thank you for that. You're welcome. You're welcome. And and he's got some great stories too, man. He's got great stories. I'll bet. I'll bet. I'll bet. Like I say, I you know it's it's interesting, guys. That I'm thinking. I was thinking recently. Or, some some my audience knows I've got some some uh, neurodegenerative issues and the I was thinking back back when I was like I'm talking about this I was born in '53 so back in the what mid to late '60s buying an album you couldn't listen to it there was no social media to tell you it was any good or not good or you might like it or let me hear a cut or go to YouTube and hear it and then I'll go buy it and and. I I was just thinking, what would what like Elvin Bishop? Why did I buy an Elvin Bishop album? Again, I don't want to take your time up with this, but I've been thinking it's just interesting when you look back and for me as a 70 year old to look back and say, wow, you know, why did I I love this album and I've loved the music, but what made me pick it up and buy it at that time? So and Elvin Bishop was one of them, by the way. So, yeah. For me, I don't know about you, but for me, I probably heard something on the radio or maybe one of my friends had it and I heard it and liked it. You know, that would have been my personal experience like that. But I mean, I, I appreciate, you know, that the question you're asking yourself. Yeah. Because I, I that myself, looking back at my record collection, something I may have picked up decades ago and wondering, what, why did I buy that? What motivated you? Yeah. What impetus was to caused me to buy this album you know maybe one song i heard that i liked that's cool so let's talk about texas scratch and this album that by the way i absolutely love it, it how many years in the making i mean what give, who wants to tell us the history of it of texas scratch buddy i took well, I did, I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll turn it over to you and i'll get the next time Okay, cool. I should call on. I, I hate calling on people. Well, buddy, you tell us. And But yeah, go ahead, buddy. Tell us the history. We really don't know why it took so long. We we started in 2009. I jumped in Jim's van with him and we drove from Dallas to Dover, New Jersey to a, a studio called Showplace Studios that, that half, it was half recording studio, half strip bar. <laughs> and there's, there's, a door, there's a door in the middle of the building. You open it up, and, and it was it was it wasn't like a strip joint. It was like Go Go Girls. That's what it's, that's what the sign says out front. Showplace Go Go Girls. But anyway, we worked with Ben Elliott up there, who is a, a fine engineer and producer. And but before that, we had started with Arnie Goodman and Blue Storm Records, and Arnie brought us up or, you know, set it up for us to record. We met Vince up there and uh, worked about four days getting tracks down, just basic tracks, and uh, had a great time doing it and uh, had, had a musical good time, and we had a lot of laughs, too. And uh, then not long after that, we kept hearing, well, the album's going to be out in September. Well, it'll be out in February. Well, it'll be out in July. And it, and it just went on until we finally just – Everything we hear, we go, yeah, what else are you going to tell me, you know? Anyway, like Jim says, he says he logged on to Facebook one day and saw that it was available on social media before anybody told us that it was even out. And uh, we were just thrilled oh. to death that, that it's finally seeing the light of day on Porto Valley Records and uh, with Bruce Porto and uh, Mike Carr and, and their bunch, and it uh, looks like they've done a really good job of uh, promoting it. And we've done a lot of interviews, talked to some really nice people, and hopefully we're going to sell a few of them. I hope so. The style of music, uh, you know, for, firstly, by the way, when I was reading about where Texas Scratch came from, and I don't want to belabor it, and where the expression came from was was very cool. What, back to 1927 it's, or That's something? With incorrect. That's incorrect information. Is it? 
Yeah, the, the, that has nothing to do. We we didn't. I had never even heard of that Carter Scratch thing. I certainly knew the. But if you're talking about no. the family guitar technique, Thanks. which I assume you're doing, that yes. was a, a factual error that was somehow inserted into the press bio. Oof. I'm glad I didn't just. You know, I'm glad it just wasn't something that happened in my brain. Well, I'm sorry to head. Off, but no, no, I want you to. I please, Jim, thank you. I want you to correct me if I'm inaccurate, wrong, whatever. Please, well, you're seeing what you were given. That was actually a, an error by who I think from Arnie, our dear esteemed friend Arnie Goodman, uh -oh. uh, or whoever wrote that bio came up. Just I, I'm not sure where that came from, but uh, I think but as but Buddy is related the story to me, Arnie came up with a name and buddy asked him about it and he said arnie answered well isn't scratch money and um, i guess buddy said yeah but you know, I, we you know i still don't see the connection but th it, that's what we're called it's yeah know, that's like if you're a kid and you're named murgatroyd that's what you're stuck with <laughs> <laughs> I, I, well, I, had, I had a tune called ain't got the scratch on this album yes and, uh, he was going with that, I suppose. And he says, how about Texas Scratch? And I said, why would you call it that? And he goes, well, is it money scratch? And I said, well, you know, I suppose it could be, you know, it could be a lottery ticket. It could be a lot of things. But uh, that's what we are. And uh, that's my, my story. And I'm sticking with it. <laughs> By the way, great song. I ain't got to scratch. But I'm really, I really appreciate that you uh, educated me on that. And, and that inaccurate and corrected that inaccuracy. Well, so, we, go ahead. Go ahead. Interrupt you. Please continue. I was. No, no, uh, go ahead, buddy. No, I'm done. So again, all these years, this music, kind of in what do I want to say in limbo, and then finally, so Valley Records said we're doing it. Yeah, I mean, I guess they just found a home for it. <clears throat> It had been shopped off and on for, you know, over a decade. I, I don't know how aggressively it was being shopped at times. I'm guessing it had just been sitting there languishing for a spell or for periods of time before you know, somebody decided to, you know, try to find a home for it. But, um, yeah, I mean, the record was completed in October of 2009 when wow. – I came back to Dallas and overdubbed some keyboard parts on it, like a, maybe a few months later. And then we fully expected it to be out in 2010. And then, well, that turned into 2011 and so on and so forth. But uh, we didn't have any real answers and we, re you know, still don't as, as to why it took so long, why it didn't come out where it was planned was, I think, because that label dried up or the guy that had the money, Right up, the <laughs> money are not spin anymore. So that that's my best guess. Well, but it's here now. And again, right. I, 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 and I, I say this every once in a while. Music for me that I can like love the first time I'm hearing a song is rare. Uh, more rare these days. You know, I have to listen and listen, and you know, because I'm I've got limited time. Sometimes, do I really want to listen to that again? your album i love like like immediately it's got that oh i'm at a loss for word that vibe that sound that that just like immediately gets in my soul does that make it yeah. am i making any sense guys please i mean i don't know go ahead buddy go ahead. i just said just keep talking it sounds good to me yeah, yeah. <laughs> to write songs that sound that maybe are new or fresh hopefully but still sound familiar that's you know, I'm, yeah I'm, i like that new and fresh yet still sound familiar i like that i like that that's a good good way of saying it i hadn't thought about it quite like that that that's that's interesting talking about texas scratch and the, uh the newly released is how i should say it the newly released album we've got all the links up uh and how to get it, where to get it, all the different uh, the, the platforms. It just blows me away. I don't understand all the platforms, uh, but available and good. And you've heard me play 
bits and pieces. And you know you love it, and I do too. And I'm honored to have Buddy Whittington and Jim Heller on Louis B. Free Radio Show, Brain Food from the Heartland. So uh, how does it how did it feel? I'll ask you, Jim, how did it feel when now that it's released after all these years? Well, shock. It's, uh, I was surprised. Uh, you know, I was like, well, I better get, you know, better get the group together and better, you know, start planning some things to promote it. You know, I was, you know, but because we didn't know about it, we were behind in that regard. Um, but yeah, I, I was happy, relieved. Yeah. Uh, all of those words would would describe how I felt, and I, I and I like this in the album. It still connects with me. So yeah, I, I was just happy that the world was going to hear it because I'd been talking about it so long. I think you know it it, it almost become like uh, you know telling people you saw Bigfoot or a UFO. It's, <laughs> <laughs> this album even existed and I, I frankly i i begin was beginning to doubt it myself but as soon as you give up on something that's when it happens and that's interesting what are your thoughts buddy on it being out now well just i'm just happy to see that somebody's going to have a chance to hear it i mean look, we start we were well i'm only i can only speak for myself but i was still sort of a young man when we did it and uh <laughs> i'm a little bit farther down the road now and i'm going well i'm glad i got a chance to you know to have somebody have a chance to hear this before uh i might have to saunter off into the nether world or whatever you know wherever <laughs> that's good and people get to hear it they get i love the music my own sense i love this music texas scratch so let me ask let me stay with you buddy for a minute Music for you, you can t where does it come from? How did you get into playing? What do you mind a little bit of that? My sister, my si I had a sister that was 10 years older than me that uh, had an impressive, fantastic record collection 45s and you know, yeah. 33 and the thirds, and had uh, everything from uh, Jimmy Reed and Slim Harpo. Gary U.S. Bonds, the Beatles, the Kinks, the Stones, the Who, but you know everybody. And uh, there was always some kind of music going on in the house. Nobody played music until I wanted to start, but I wanted to start. I, I just got interested seeing guitars and amps, you know, and hearing them. And like we had two local country TV shows, one in Dallas and one in Fort Worth, the Big D Jamboree and the, and the Cowtown Jamboree, and they were both on Saturday. And uh, my dad was a big fan of that kind of thing. And he would watch that. And I would come in there mostly just to see, you know, who was playing a Strat or a Telly or through a Super Reverb or, a, you know, oh, God, just yeah. to see what they what they had. And uh, a lot of that was, was how I got started in that. There was a lot of country music in the house and Western swing music, Bob Wills music, which I don't really, I'm not, I'm not a, I'm a huge proponent of it, but I can't play it. So I can, I, everybody's got their little lick, you know what I mean? And, and that, that's kind of what mine turned into. Just, uh, we had Freddie King living in Dallas and, and he was Never. available to go, you know, a lot of, I saw Freddie lots of times. And uh, he used to hang around a club in Dallas called Mother Blues. And I'd go over there to see him and Bugs Henderson and John Nitzinger. And Nitzinger, that's another guy that figures in the Texas Scratch Equation. He, he, uh, there's a song on there called Louisiana Cockfight that it was written mm -hmm. by John Nitzinger back in the 70s when it was out on his, he was on Capitol Records. From, and I thought, how does a guy from Fort Worth, Texas wind up on Capitol Records, the same label that the Beatles are on, you know? Anyway, he was a, a, a big influence on me, and I'm sure Jim too. And uh, we just kind of did that as a tip of the hat to him. So Jim, music for you. Can you tell us a little bit about the history for you? Um, well, I, I, I bet Buddy and I were listening to a lot of the same radio stuff growing up, KLIF or K, KFJZ or, you know, stuff like that. And then there was a soul station, KKDA. Um, KNOK. KNOK, I forgot about them. Yeah, boy, it's been a minute since I thought about it. I remember their bump. <laughs> but yeah, that stuff, uh, this was actually one of the, Top, you know, first markets for top 40 radio because Gordon McClendon, who is credited with inventing that format, whether that's 
accurate or not, I don't know, but he's at the forefront of that. He he owned a bunch of stations, including KLIF in Dallas. And you could drive by the, the studio was downtown. And uh, you could drive by and see the, the DJs in the window. I'm sure you probably did that at some point, buddy. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, that stuff, that was the pivotal stuff for me. Just like it opened my ears. I didn't have any brothers or sisters and my dad liked jazz and Dixieland jazz. Huh. So that's what, you know, that's the music that he listened to. But yeah, I was all about buying records from like age five and six. As soon as I could convince my parents to take me to a record store at that age. So yeah, I, I had Beatles albums and stuff in the first grade, but that's, 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 that was my initial introduction to music and playing for you how did you playing, start that yeah. came later uh you know the top 40 thing diminished in terms of importance in the marketplace and in my life and it was more album oriented rock we had that we had good stations for that here too like k and us uh so I, I started getting into more album rock or you know more serious rock not just you know two and a half minute top 40 songs and then got into bands like, you know, the Stones and the Allman Brothers and bought those albums and saw the, you know, the names of the composers on the back of the albums and started looking into those people like Jimmy Reed and T-Bone Walker and stuff. And and so I, I like worked my way backwards into the blues and, you know, finally landed in the earliest stuff recorded, which was basically about 100 years ago, which is really my favorite stuff to listen to the what is known as the pre-war blues when people were making records on 78s wow. but wow. anyway um pre-war so, blues i never even heard the expression well country blues rural blues race records you know it's like this you know the wow. robert era you know like, I guess. yeah yeah um but that, that's like just i love listening to that but it's like only me and like three other people i know <laughs> too <laughs> so kind of a niche thing and i i but i loved rock and roll music a lot it's like i love the blues but i just read a good captain beefheart quote he said i love the blues but i love aquamarine too yeah. so i didn't want to <laughs> i'm not a blues guy i mean I, I i like to interpret it what i hear but I'm so tainted by rock music and all the other stuff I've listened to that, you know, I don't want to pretend to be any like, you know, I'm second. I'm not I'm any true blues guy. And that's well, in that. I, I yeah. And I, I don't even know what a true what that would mean anymore. A true blues guy. You know, I mean, there's so much in blues. I don't, I don't want to take time with that, but what I have found so much in that, that I understand it's blues, but there are so many different variances and nuance. I don't know, whatever. But I do have to tell you about Captain Beefheart. When you mentioned, you only know you've got like three friends that'll listen to like, like the some of the style of music you listen to. I'm the only one that was in my group and I still listen to Captain Beefheart and I still irritate somebody close to me in a good way, but when they don't pick up the phone, I start singing a Captain Beefheart if they can't or whatever, if it goes to voicemail. And if they call me, I start with a Captain Beefheart song. So well, and it's the only one. I nobody, nobody, there was other people like Zappa, but not Captain Beefheart. And I'm not comparing the two or contrasting the two, but I know they work together. Uh nobody, but I'm so delighted that you mentioned Captain Beefheart. Hit hit one of his old drummers, uh Buddy, do you know Ty Grimes? Yes. You know, Ty played with Captain Beefheart. In fact, he's I on. Know. Yeah, he's on. If you look up Captain Beefheart on the Old Gray Whistle Test, the British TV show from the 70s, there's Ty Grimes playing with Captain Beefheart. And I, I, and I played with Ty and hung out with him. And I don't know why I never asked him about his experience. But I'm sure he's he's got some interesting stories to tell. Yeah, he also but, played with Ricky Nelson. Yeah, and I, and I think he was he playing with him that when the plane crashed, or what? I don't think so. Because I don't know if who who was on the plane if the whole band if the whole band was on there, but yeah, that act actually was uh, that happened here in our area that plane yeah. crash. I think he was coming to Dallas to play. Yeah, it was on New Year's Eve. I can't remember the year. It was in the eighties, but uh, uh, my wife and I were 
seeing George Strait in oh, Dallas. Strait. And, and it, it, we, when we got out of there, we turned the radio on, and that's all they were talking about was their plane had gone down. Oh, man. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, back to Captain Beefheart. I, I, I always, you know, I, I loved it. You know, and there, there's a meme that's going around. It, it, apparently, Bono from U2 wrote him a letter and said, Dear Captain Beefheart, um, would you be interested in recording with me? And, and the, uh, Captain Beefheart, I forgot what he didn't call him Bono, but he made up some other funny name for him. Of course. Said, oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> very, very terse. Yeah, I'll bet. I'll bet. That's a, that's that's all right. I'm glad that we were able to uh, talk a bit about uh, Captain Beefheart. I just heard Dachau Blues the other day again. I was playing some Beefheart. It just it. Uh, brought me to tears with everything going on in the world today. So, ladies and gentlemen, I am having the honor of talking with Jim Sutter and Buddy Whittington of Texas Scratch. So, you guys think you will be playing together sometime in the night? We have we have two coming up, two Texas Scratch oh. gigs coming up. Uh, one in, in Dennis and Te Texas on February the second, and then we have one in Dallas. Uh, what's the date on that, Jim? The 24th or something like that? Yeah, it's at the, I believe it's the 23rd or 24th. It's Poor David's. February 24th at Poor David's Pub in Dallas. Wow. And uh, certainly you'll be doing more. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Plan. Um, because of we, we've been struck, you know, trying to get, like I said, we were a little behind as far as like getting things ready, events and promotions and stuff. And um, the record was released digitally, I guess, about six months ago. And then the CD release didn't come till what, September, October, buddy? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So, you know, we're still scrambling and we're still booking gigs. So that, yeah, that's the plan. And we'd like to, to get out of town, but there's some geographical obstacles like Vince is in uh Colorado Jeff Simon the drummer is in Philadelphia or near Philadelphia yeah you know and so just because it's easier to do it buddy and I've just kind of you know seize them seize the mail and charge forward with it just book a few gigs until we can put the whole group together I had to learn the songs over again yeah, it's time. To, I got to go back and brush up on those. <laughs> I just, I guys, I, what an honor. Best place to find inf any information about you, buddy? Where Where do we look? You know, uh, I, I'm just going to go ahead and say Facebook because I have a, a web, web page, but it is hopelessly, you know, out of date. And uh, yeah. just uh, just look me up on Facebook. I, I have one called Buddy Whittington and one called Buddy Whittington Fans and Friends, and I'm I'm I'm, I'm on there way more than I should be. <laughs> Aren't we all, Jim? For you, uh, you can go to my website. It's jimsuler.com, J-I-M-S-U-H-L-E-R. And uh, if you're interested, and in, there's information on our shows, and also you can go to my Facebook page or Instagram, and you can go to the Corto Valley. Yeah, Web that link. I'm sorry, go ahead. To buy the CD if you'd like, or Amazon, or it's also available on any of the digital music platforms, such as iTunes, It's and you can stream it as well if you want to do that. Well, I've got to say, what an honor to have you both on the show, doing the gig with me, buddy. Thanks. This is this is a, a thrill. You guys are legendary. I love the music, that, and I'm glad it finally came out. And uh, I'm I'm just honored. Thank you, well, Thanks for having us, Louie. We certainly appreciate y'all helping yeah. us get the word out. Well, yeah, thank. Be nice to meet you, my friend. I hope we can do it again sometime. Thanks for right. suffering my madness, guys. Thank you so much. I know you got to split. Thank you, thank you both. I really, really, really appreciate it. Appreciate You're it, well. ladies and gentlemen. You listen to the 